all that work and what did it get me? Why did I do it? Let me go ahead. Let me go ahead and light this Palo Santo real quick because I need to go ahead and get ready to ward off any of these evil, dusty spirits that are going to try to come in here through my comment section and mess up my day, child. Go on and get y'all out of here right now. Thank you. Because this one going to be a doozy, okay? This one going to be a doozy, y'all. And I already know because folks going to have a problem with what I'm about to say. But guess what? I've come to the point in my life where I don't give a fuck. If you have a problem with what I have to say. Welcome and welcome back, you guys, to Mom Jeans by Nutcase. It is yours truly, the Nutcase Case Nicole. And I am back again with the shenanigans. As always, we getting into shenanigans over here. So I'm going to need y'all to like the video. I'm going to need for y'all to subscribe. I'm going to need for y'all to go ahead and uh, get in the comments and speak on whatever you want to speak on. Argue in the comments. Just don't try to argue with me for real, okay? Because I'm not going to argue with you. So get those things done and out the way because we need to talk about this. 4B movement. And I know a lot of y'all, you know, men and women alike, whoever has an opinion, non-binary, non-gender, LGBTQ+, folks might have an opinion on this. But I think it's something that we kind of need to break down a little bit to understand all the dynamics of the situation because I feel like there's a lot of dynamics that are going into the situation that folks aren't really clearly comprehending yet. So if you want to hear about it, if you want to hear what I have to say about it, stick around. Because this is a television program, all right? You're watching me probably on your phone or your laptop, just like you watch Netflix, Hulu, HBO Max. This is a program. So we're going to get through this intro, and then we're going to get into it. Let's go, boo. you guys so i hope you got the liking subscribing and notifications turned on already i hope that you got all that out the way because today we need to talk about this 4b movement and i'm gonna be throwing a few tiktoks in here periodically now and then because folks have a lot to say about this but i'm just gonna be straight up my opinion about the situation is i'm happy it's long overdue i was just talking about all of the the dynamics between women and the way the patriarchy has basically turned women against each other for the benefit of themselves, for the benefit of the patriarchy. Okay, I talked about this. And if you haven't seen that video, there was women fighting in an Airbnb and it was some competitive, oh, she hating on me, she jealous type of stuff. Go check it out. I did a live on it and we talked about this and I told you guys in the live that there's a reason why these men try to pit us against each other as women. And y'all need to be aware of how deep this goes because I think a lot of people just think that just because we don't know the information as individuals and because we don't know the history as individuals that the history doesn't exist but this has been going on for an extended period of time and it's been going on for an extended period of time for a reason that people really don't understand and a lot of these folks out here who are in power really don't want you to know so i'm about to give you the tea and if you're a woman i suggest you continue to tune in until the end of this video okay y'all don't mind a little green dot on me that's just you know my power source no i'm just playing it's my little light thing in the background but i'm just saying you guys need to know some things as to why why the patriarchy continues to overtly and covertly pit women against each other and create this dynamic where they isolate women and try to put women into boxes so that we can't do or think for ourselves. Because it's a plot. Nothing happens for no reason. And that's why I said just because we were born when we were born doesn't mean things haven't been going on for centuries and eons in a certain way for a certain reason. Now, when it comes to the 4B movement, if you guys don't know exactly what the 4B movement 
is. I'll put it on the screen for you. This may definitely be simplified for, I guess, Americans or people in the United States. I feel like there's nuance to a lot of these movements and they just pop up and you don't really know where they stem from exactly. Like it's very difficult to pinpoint these movements and where they come from and where they originate from and how it really, really gets started, especially if it's in a different country. So according to Wikipedia, the 4B or 4 No's is a feminist movement which purported to have originated in South Korea in 2019. Its proponents renounced dating men, marriage, sex with men, and having children. Okay. Ooh, that's drastic, didn't they? Didn't, didn't they go just NATO on it? I, I believe so. And you know, we have to understand that this originated in a different country. And this is not something that we, again, necessarily know the exact origins of. However, it's having its effect on men and women in the United States. And it's starting to come across our radar and different things like that. So as a woman, me personally, and any of you watching, I feel it's necessary for you to know about it. And I really did not know. I didn't know it was a name. I, know, I didn't know we had a name. What I did was basically go live and one of my beautiful subscribers and commenters and viewers put a comment on the girls trip Airbnb argument video that I went live on and basically said the 4B movement is real or something like that. And I was like, what's the 4B movement? Cause I'm thinking it's a hair type. I'm like, girl, let me not put a heart on this comment yet because I need to look up what the 4B movement is because if folks is being racist out here and I don't know about it, I don't want to support that. <laughs> That's honestly how I found out about it. But it's so interesting. It's so interesting how you come across things that you're just meant to know. It just comes to you and you don't even really have to do anything. You just have to let things be received. And that's what I feel like a lot of women need to learn. And that's what I feel like is a part of some of the good things about this 4B movement is we need to understand that we just need to sit there and receive. So when this said comment was left, I was like, let me go look it up. Of course, TikTok. <laughs> that's where we get all our information. Google or TikTok. I did go to both actually and I checked out out what it was so I was watching a few videos about it and I found out that it was this movement where women were basically abstaining from men and all the different things that I mentioned now <sighs> This is what a lot of people are saying about it. I'll, I'll add some TikToks in there to let you know what it's about. I'm so glad you asked. The 4B movement is a movement in South Korea right now where the misogyny and sexism is so bad that South Korean women have decided to opt out of dealing with men entirely. That is not a joke. That is not an exaggeration. They are not dating men. They are not marrying men. They are not having children with men. They're not even sleeping with men anymore. And it's called the 4B movement because the Korean words for those four things all start with the letter B. This kind of first started happening around 2016 when Kim Ji Young, born 1982, a novel came out. And it is a fictional book about a Korean every woman and all of the misogyny and sexism that she's experienced from literally being a child all the way to her being an adult suffering with postpartum depression after having her child. Now, this book became a runaway bestseller among South Korean women because they were like, She's just like me for real. And that's kind of when it started cooking, right? Now, the movement officially got its name in 2019, and it's just been going ever since. It's so successful, in fact, that now South Korea has one of the lowest birth rates in the world. The number of deaths in South Korea outnumber the number of births in South Korea. And it's hilarious because all the men and the government are like, oh my God, what do we do? We, they, they don't want to like talk to us. They don't want to date us. They don't, what do we do? Like everything's in shambles. We don't know what to do. When South Korean women have been very clear from day one, they're like, hey, either you get your act together or we are literally eliminating all of this. Like we are shutting it down. So that's the 4B movement and why I'm so obsessed with it and why I think we should have the 4B movement everywhere. Thanks for listening. Bye. But the women of South Korea have gotten so fed up with the misogyny. Oh girl, wait, hold on. It's so much worse than that. It's so much worse. And I mean worse in a really good way. Like, <laughs> like, yay team. The situation has gotten so bad. They don't have any kids. They don't have any first graders enrolled in over 150 schools. And the gag is they've only been doing this since 2019. So in five years time, they have managed to erase an entire class of youth. It didn't even take them that long. It's only been five years. This is really bad. Now I took statistics in high school and I don't remember much, but I do recommend what my teacher said when, when numbers drastically change consistently over a certain amount of time, whether it goes up or down, whether it is good or bad. Once it gets to a certain point of uh, no return, that shit's like a domino effect. It's, it's only either gonna get better or worse. And if these women in Korea continue this for another five to 10 years, oh boy. Like think about it, in 10 years, Stacked on top of the five they already got underneath their belt. 15 years go by, they will not be a graduating class of 2039. We could very well see an entire generation completely wiped within our generation. And Korea is, it ain't little. It's so fascinating that they've managed to do this in such a short amount of time, like five years, no first graders. Just imagine what that looks like in like four years. There won't be whole ass elementary schools, period. And they're trying to pay these women. They're so desperate. They're like, all right, listen, hold on. We'll, we'll cut you a check. For every kid that you have, we'll give you like 75 grand. And the ladies was like, fuck out of here. I, I, no, it's, that's quite all right. <laughs> This is delicious. I, I truly hope that, you know, women here in the States can get it together long enough to make this happen here. <laughs> if I found out was the ultimate stage, it would be right here. <laughs>
Now, with this revelation of decisions that are being made with the women of South Korea, right? There are certain revelations that are starting to be made with women in the United States. And, and you know, bless their hearts, everybody is reacting to this very differently because everybody has different feelings about the subject. Men are reacting in different ways than women. Women are reacting in different ways than men. There are some women who agree. There are some women who disagree. There are some men who agree. There are some men who disagree. And then everybody's kind of chiming in, even if they're not necessarily a woman, you know, everybody having their opinion and chiming into the situation. So I, you know, folks are responding. Folks are talking, y'all. So it's official. The creator is leaving. And I don't know why this thing gave me <laughs> blue eyes, but I'm not changing it. Anyway, the creator has officially said, get somebody else to do it. Get somebody else to do it. The 4B movement. Now, um, Anybody that follows my videos knows I've been talking about this for a while. Mainly the masculine existential fear of being abandoned. The fear of women not needing men is part of that younger gender's fear of not having big sis or mommy around. Knowing that we can leave them, abandon them at the mall or wherever they are having fun is scary. Especially when you're a child. We're leaving the baby. What kind of mothers are we? Not only is the parent abandoning the child, she's also leaving the baby out of the fun part, making a club. And the masculines love being a part of a club. So they made the 4G movement for men. No schmecks, no time, no provision, no babies. I love this. Remember when I said that men are the younger gender and they represent the younger energy, which is masculine energy? This is the energy that's all about games and, and um, competition, comparing yourself to someone else. They don't realize this isn't a game. They think it's a game, or rather they're hoping it's a game, which is, is kind of sad because it shows that, that all of this time they did not realize, like they, were, they weren't thinking this whole um, misogyny thing through, this patriarchy thing, they weren't thinking it through. When they were creating the floor is lava, they started to actually believe the floor is lava. They started actually believing that telling women that once they're over 30 that they're worthless while also relying on women to do all the household responsibilities and carry the mental load and bear them children and be abused like they, they really believed that a woman saying i have a man was worth all of that was something that we would take to the bank even after we weren't legally forced to outside of coercion there's no reason to center a romantic relationship with a man this relationship can't work romantically so yeah again this is a wonderful time to be alive i am so grateful to be able to witness this shift you don't you don't respect this respect us. Respect us. don't mess with don't us, with us. That ain't right yeah. We don't take nothing up nobody. Don't take care. Don't take care. Don't take care. Okay, so there are five things that men are going to do to try to fight the 4B movement. One of them is going to be terror. They're going to use terror to threaten women. They're going to try to scare women by telling us all the things they're going to do to us, and some of them are going to actually act out these things. So you're right, it would be good to get your self-defense strategies ready. Thing number two will be sour grapes. Oh, we didn't want you ladies anyway. Y'all are over 30, y'all are used up, just that. Third thing that they're going to do is attempt to appeal to and exploit feminine empathy. Y'all are really being selfish, you're really hurting people. You women don't care about what this is doing to the world, to um, the male loneliness epidemic. This is pretty much just the, the baby crying, you know, if you're black. We all black people need to come together. We can't keep doing this gender war thing. Thing number four is going to be attempting to start movements of their own, which they've already done well everything i'm saying they've already done and are already doing but um this one will be short-lived because they don't have a good reason for wanting to divest from romantic relationships with women and, and they've never been in romantic relationships with women they've just been exploiting women collectively speaking on an individual basis you know i can't speak to that but collectively collectively speaking uh fabricated romance has been pretty much a collective exploitation of feminine energy and women number five the, the fifth thing that they're going to do when all else fails is call daddy dad is the law this is happening now as well reproductive rights being taken away from women that's the boys calling daddy in in order to force mom to stay we're, we're seeing it all play out but um it's really interesting the 4B movement is going to force men to be red pill. It doesn't matter if you're single, married, in a relationship. You're going to be forced to be a red pill, brother, man. And if you're already a red pill man right now, this 4B movement is a victory for us because everything that we've said, every every boundary that we've said, that's what we meant. And they, this is why they have to do what they have to do. You understand what I'm saying? Because we told them we don't want no old single mothers. We don't want women with high body counts. And so with, with that being said, like, they have to do this, guys. You have to understand this is a victory for men because, listen, we know that the majority of the women who are talking all this about the 4B movement, they've hit the wall, they're over 30, they had children before, they got married, they never been married, but they got children, and they got a high body count, bro. You know what I'm saying? So they're, they're doing us a favor. I don't remember asking you a goddamn thing. So this 4B movement, hey, I'm cool with it. I think, let them have it. I don't think men should come up with no 4G movement. I don't think we should come up with a movement to coincide with what they got going on. Let them have that. Most women are misandrous anyway. They hate men. They hate men. They hate everything about men. They don't like how we talk. They don't like the masculinity. They don't like none of that shit. So that's perfectly okay. I'm okay with that. As man, as me, I'm okay with it. But how you how you combat that is you take your provision, you take your protection, you take all that shit and ball it up and you hold it as a man. And when the shit hit the fan, guess who they looking for? Men. That's it. We have the power to make morons go extinct. Can't wait till y'all use some of them powers to make white supremacy go extinct. Girl, bye. Anywho, ladies. I love this phobia movement for y'all. I believe y'all can do it, you know? I believe y'all can do it, you know? You know, birth rates went down, you know? Women aren't having SEX anymore, you know? These babies really just falling out the sky. Y'all can really do it, you know? This movement that y'all created, you know? Yeah, y'all rocking with it. Y'all can do it, you know? I'm believing y'all. I'm rooting for y'all big time. 
Leave us crazy men alone. Fellas, we did this to ourselves. These women are tired. They are so tired that they had to steal another woman's movement. Another race of women. That's how tired they are. They couldn't come up with their own scheme. They couldn't come up with their own movement. That's how tired they are. We need to do better. Ladies, we deserve this. Full B for life. Are we not going to talk about how feminism is led by misandry? Like the 4B movement? Is that not of the devil? Like it's literally evil. These women are talking about how they're not going to date men, sleep with men, procreate with men, and all these other things, right? And it's like, wow, like, what are you going to do? Feminism is going to lead these women into dating each other. Literally, that's it. This is not going to benefit you in any way. In any way at all. Like, well, what is this going to do with the 4B movement? This just screams you hate men. Like, imagine if men got on this app and said, oh, yeah, we're going to participate in the 4Bs, and we're not going to sleep with women. We're not going to talk to women or date women. You know what we'd be ashamed for that? It'd be, it actually, you know what it sounds like? It sounds weird. Like, this literally goes against human nature. You're not going to sleep with men and procreate with men and marry men. Who, who in their right mind would want to participate in that? Actually, I'm a sandrist. That's who. <laughs> like, imagine if men got on this app and said, oh, yeah, we're going to participate in the 4Bs. If us men were to sit here and create a movement where we wanted to no longer center women and we wanted to keep to ourselves and stay far away from them as possible, I think that they would absolutely love that. I think if every woman, woman on the planet had the choice to be a lesbian, they would absolutely take it. I ain't trying to sound like no simp or nothing, but bro, us as men, we suck. We're their number one on a lever by a mile, bro. Like, the vast majority of us are extremely dangerous to them. And they have a right to feel how they want to feel. And all they're saying is they just don't want to center us anymore. You know what I mean? If you really that guy, earn him. I mean, what's the problem? I mean, you ain't got no riz. You ain't got no game. I mean, are you a terrible person? If that's not you, then why are you getting so uptight about this movement? You want to change their minds, earn them back. They're just letting you know that us men ain't the only ones with all this power. They got the keys now. And without them, civilization doesn't move, bro. They're demanding their respect. Deservingly so. So how about we give it to them, earn them back, so we can get this ish back on the roll. If not, they're out of here, buddy. And that's not on them, that's on us. Respectfully. The only men who are upset about the 4B movement are men who on some level are completely aware that they are the problem, that they are the reason that kind of movement even exists. And it's like the petulance of saying like, no, I'm not going to listen, I'm not going to communicate, I'm not going to be sensitive to my partner's needs, uh, I'm not going to be thoughtful and considerate and treat my partner like a human being, and I shouldn't be forced to do any of those things. <laughs> I mean, the temper tantrum, the temper tantrums I've seen from men just on TikTok about this have, have been amazing and completely unsurprising in every way, shape, and form. I'm going to make a video that's way more in-depth on my YouTube about this, but I'm just hearing not only about the 4B movement, I've, I've been hearing about that, the 4G, I'm assuming that's for top Jays, top gangsters. <laughs> I'm assuming that's for guys, uh, but I'll give you the benefit of the doubt and I will not assume that it's for guys who want to be like Andrew Tate, but, oh, actually TMI, because I'm going to say some adult things right now. One of the criteria was no provision. And I'm gonna tell you right now, these women can work their own jobs. These women can go to school on their own. They can put their money in a bank account. They can have friends. They can invest in themselves. That ain't gonna be no problem. But the one that I really wanted to get to was no sex. I mean, it's not like y'all get it anyway, but I think this is an amazing, amazing idea that non-religious men are finally having. Like maybe you should go celibate because it seems like for a majority of guys, this subconscious game that you can convince a woman to want to give something to you that she had no intention of giving to you, if you just become the right kind of man, never gonna happen. People like you or they don't like you, move on when they tell you no. But even for the guys that are engaging in relations with women, you don't make them feel comfortable enough to be able to reach their O point. And if you've engaged, you know what I mean by that. They don't feel vulnerable in their emotions. They don't feel like they can be present with you. They don't feel like they can even engage with you because for most people, they feel like sex is just to gratify the man that they're in relationship with so they don't stop being provided for and cared for. And then what's even worse than that is that most of you guys gratify yourself with these women and then after that, you don't even have the decency to care, like do the aftercare. You know what's so wild? Just analyzing, and not even hookup culture, well, I mean, a little bit hookup culture, but just analyzing all the issues that men are having with the 4B movement, it's, you gotta realize it's just exposing the fact that men need women more than women need men. And if women are willing to go on that no contact business, like the way that uh, a victim of narcissistic abuse needs to go no contact for the narcissist to finally look into a mirror, because narcissists love to break mirrors and never look at themselves and actually take accountability. Personally, I think it's gonna be the self-destruction of like 70% of men in this country. And I think it's gonna completely jack up um, population, completely reconfigure demographics, completely change the, the population and migration status of this country. But that's what I'm gonna get into in the YouTube video. For right now, I just want you to know that those of you guys who are so against the 4B movement, I want you to know that when this does start getting implemented on like a mass scale, you are the only person to blame after this. Women are not asking you to do a lot. It's not a lot to be a decent human being. It's not a lot to educate yourself. It's not a lot to humble yourself in places that you don't need to exert power over people to feel like you're better than them. You don't need to subjugate people beneath your ego so you can feel like you can accept yourself as a human being. You can just accept yourself for contributing to society and taking care of yourself with some decent standards. Oh, you know what? In this new world that we're so afraid of going into where feminism and wokeness dominates everything, maybe women, in their ability to understand what it means to care and connect with themselves and with other women, can share those lessons with others, us as men, giving us the time and the space to care about our mental health, giving us the opportunity to contribute to society, to extend to more than just our own nuclear family and our own personal legacy. Most of you guys don't even have a legacy. Most of you guys don't even have enough money to pay bills every month. Let's be honest with shit. What legacy are you going to pass down? Debt? Mental illness? But, you know, for all my... For all my years, if there was an award ceremony for being misrepresented as a pander, for just spreading good information, I'd have like six MVPs. But 
you know, the truth is doing all the karma that I need to these people, bro, who just want to stay ignorant. So for everybody who's seen this 4B movement and we're excited to see where it's going to go, I just want you to know I'm excited as ever. I'm ready to see what's going to happen to these alpha males when they finally realize that they are their own issue. And if they're going to destroy the entire world because they refuse to take accountability, or they're willing to destroy the ego that the patriarchy has created within them so that patriarchy can continue itself while using all of our ignorance rather than the patriarchy actually reciprocating the energy it exploits from us to actually make decent human beings, create conscious communities, and maybe, maybe, maybe change the world. You guys have a good day. Make sure you subscribe to my YouTube channel because I'm going crazy on there all year. Do I agree with the 4B movement in theory? Yes. But do I have a problem with the 4B movement? Yes. I'm going to run and I'm going to make this very plain. So TikTok, this is for educational purposes only. My like Beretta is a f I'm telling you to get a f You choosing to leave men alone don't mean that you will be left alone. So if you don't want to get a Beretta, you will be in a body bag. You really think that a man is just going to just, they're just going to stop with y'all? No, you just don't give a oh, this ain't motherfucker real. These motherfuckers ain't no soft-ass Koreans. When has a man ever listened to anything that you have ever done? Ever. Y'all supposed to be the smart ones. Y'all supposed to be the smart ones. That's the thing. Y'all think about a logical way. Men are emotional. Y'all trying to make make sense. They're going to do what the f want to do like they always have as a woman. You cannot keep a man from nothing that he really wants. Even if that thing is your own body. The only reason that your body is yours is because he does not want it bad enough. You remember that for the rest of your life. You remember that for the rest of your life. The only reason why that man has not taken your body from you is because he does not want it bad enough. If that man wants your 10-year-old daughter's body, he will take it from you. Unless you get a That is what y'all are not seeing. So if I get one more notification or one more stupid ass thing, I'm like motherfucking Dory the Explorer. Swiper, no swiping. For no swiping. You choosing to leave me alone don't mean that you will be left alone. So if you don't want to get- If you have not watched this video, go watch this video. But this will be an unforeseen issue with the 4B movement once it becomes widespread in America. Patriarchy here has given men a sense of entitlement that is almost insane. One of the reasons we have not seen a rise in violence in a, the way that we could have is because there are women still giving losers coochie. The moment that women stop giving losers coochie, all hell is going to break loose. And I am a part of the 4B movement and I am prepared for what is yet to come. But I'm telling you, once women decide in mass numbers that they're not going to give losers coochie, there will be an increase in violence with these men against women. Women giving losers coochie is what's kind of keeping them at bay. And it still ain't been keeping them at bay enough. Mark my words. We will see an increase in violence. That is why I am urging women Get you a pew pew. Take defense classes to learn how to fight. Learn how to protect yourself. Because the moment women stop giving them losers, the buns, we're going to have to start putting them down like dogs. I hate that. I'm not for violence. But this is reality. So get prepared. Now, I did add a few videos about people that I found talking about the 4B movement. And as you can see, not everybody's happy. Not everybody's happy. And as you can also see, not all men are bad. Okay, so as women, what I want us to do as we move into this new cycle of self-growth and development, and as we transition into a place where we're more aware of our power and where we have a heightened sense of self-esteem with whatever it is that we do, I need for us to also have a heightened sense of discernment and awareness about what's going on around us. That's why I included all of those videos because I wanted y'all to see kind of like the salad that's going on when it comes to conversation about this whole topic because not everybody's a hater. Not everybody's a hater on us, ladies. Not everybody is mad about whatever this means and what's going on. But I do feel it necessary to discuss a little bit about the significance of this movement and what it means to us because we need to be aware, okay? Now, before we get too deep into what it means for America, American women. I want to go ahead and show you guys a video from a woman who's actually of Asian descent, who is more so closely connected to the epicenter of where this movement originated. And I want you to see what she has to say. Korean women have no idea what the 4B movement is, and we need to stop this misinformation online. By now, you've probably heard that Korea has one of the lowest birth rates in the world. And a lot of people on TikTok specifically are attributing this to the 4B movement, which if you don't know, it's a radical feminist movement that basically tells women to completely eliminate men in their lives, which includes not dating them, not marrying them, not sleeping with them, not having children with them. When you search up the term on TikTok, you will not see one single Korean person and being like, yes, this is me right now. This is me, I'm 4B. As someone who has lived in Korea for four years, the first and only time I've ever heard about this movement is from TikTok, from Western creators. I asked my Korean friends like, hey, what do you think about the 4B movement? They literally told me, I don't know what that is. Something to also know, in Korea, being a feminist or referring to yourself as a feminist is still kind of like taboo. Tell any Korean man that you're a feminist, he'll look at you crazy. So no, the birth rate in Korea is not low because of the 4B movement, a movement which started around 2016 slash 2019. It's because it's just too expensive. People are still dating, people are still getting married at a lower rate, but again, it's because it's too expensive. Speak to any Korean person and they will say, I want to get married. I maybe want to have kids if I can afford it. No normal everyday Korean person is telling you, yes, I'm practicing the 4B movement. Korean women have no idea what the 4B movement is and we need to stop this misinformation. Okay, so thank you to my friend Annie for making that video because I am a Korean woman currently living in Korea and I have so much to say about this topic. So most of the 4B movement videos that I've seen on TikTok are made from foreigners and I think Korean Americans or just Asian people living in the West but not actually people living in Korea. So like I said, I live in Seoul. What I think is happening is the Western media likes to really pick up on these sensationalist provocative topics and then makes it into an article and then everyone on TikTok follows suit and makes videos about it. But let me tell you, I am 29, going to turn 30 this year and literally all the conversations that I have with my friends around my age is about, oh my God, we're looking to get married, we need to find good partners and we need to do 
this before it gets too late or we're just like aged out of their marriage market you know and i just made a youtube video about this korea's population crisis why nobody's getting married or having babies but i also explained there are services in korea like marriage matchmaking services where people go and you pay a broker and you submit all this information about yourself your income your assets your family background if you have any debt like which university you went to you submit all that information and then they take that and then they will try to match you up with people who they think that you're on par with so you know how you see in k-dramas how like the poor girl ends up marrying the richest ceo of korea yeah in reality that never happens so people go to these marriage services and they're heavily used there are literally so many in the country because everyone is using them and so the 4b movement in korea is a very very small fraction of the whole korea population in general it's just the western media likes to highlight that part and make it seem like it's the biggest issue in korea which it really really is not i can promise you that don't believe all those sensational articles written online all the time most people in korea still like the other sex we want to date we want to find love we want to get married those are like the big majority and it's only the small group of extreme radical misandrists and extreme radical misogynists they just seem like the loudest because because the most attention goes to them but yeah i literally just dropped a youtube video explaining about this whole thing so go watch it annalee on youtube now you guys watched that video, right? I also want you to watch this next video of an Asian American woman who has a little bit of a response to what that first woman had to say about the 4B movement. Roll the clip. The 4B movement in Korea is a very, very small fraction of the whole Korean population in general. It's just the Western media likes to highlight that part and make it seem like it's the biggest issue in Korea. Hi, my name's Hajin. I am a Korean American woman that lives in the States. And I'm a fan of Anna's content, but I have a little bit of a bone to pick with some of her perspectives or line of thinking and her elastic thoughts. So um, please don't send her hate. I am a fan of her YouTube videos and I like the content she puts out. But sometimes I feel like, I see this in my Korean peers too, but I feel like my friends in Korea, they either are delusional or in denial of the very real societal problems that exist over there, or they just choose to like turn a blind eye and say, oh, it doesn't affect me. It doesn't affect me. So I'm gonna choose not to hear about it. So, so here we go. Um, I think Anna said that the main issue of people not getting married in Korea is because of capitalism, essentially. And while she's not wrong with capitalism being an obvious contributing factor to why people are struggling over there, it would be delusional and foolish to deny the very real disparity between the female Korean experience versus the male Korean experience. For some context, Anna is right in that the 4B movement is a very fringe radical feminist, radical feminist movement in South Korea. And I should also take the time to explain that the word feminism does not have the same meaning, the same connotation in South Korea. It has an incredibly negative connotation and it's not what we think it means the way we use it in the West. And a huge reason for that is because if you look up Megalia on Wikipedia or Google, you can read about this very, very misandrist social movement that was in Korea in 2015. Basically that movement started because it was an extreme backlash against the patriarchal structure that women felt like they were being oppressed by in Korea. And while that was also an incredibly fringe, radical feminist, Miss Anders movement, it caught traction because they were spewing a lot of violent, hateful rhetoric. They were pretty much female incels, femcels. So understanding that context, the word feminism does not have a positive or good connotation in South Korea. Now that we found that out of the way, let me explain my thoughts. I don't think Anna is wrong that financials are one of the biggest reasons that people aren't getting married and having children. And no, the 4B movement, because it's not mainstream, that is not the main contributing factor to why women are not having kids. But what she is missing, and what I feel like the Western social media audience is missing, is that these are all symptoms of a very, very big issue. Even thinking about it in the workplace, I know Anna said in her last video something about how the South Korean average salary is nowhere near the US salary, which is true, it is very low. But the salary doesn't even matter when women can't even get leave for their pregnancy. Women are fully expected to quit their jobs or they let go. So sometimes even during the hiring process, um, hiring managers will ask, do you plan on getting pregnant? Because they want to know if you have the potential to leave. And if so, then they won't hire you in the first place. I know this is all over the place, but try and stay with me. The reason I really just wanted to come on here and talk about this, by the way, is because I'm seeing how my fellow Korean people who are uneducated about these very real symptomatic issues of a larger societal issue in our culture, I feel like it's preventing us from progressing, honestly, as, as a humanity. And, it, and it's just living in denial about very real pressing matters that we have the ability to fix. And I'm seeing how, at least for Korean women, we hold a lot of internalized misogyny. And I don't blame us for that because how could you not, considering the culture we come from? But this is a modern world and we really need to expand our consciousness. And if we want to progress as a human being, then we need to be willing to look here to the other side. Another very real problem in South Korea is actual crimes. A lot of foreigners and Koreans alike love to tout that, yes, Korean women feel safe walking alone at night at 3 a.m. coming home from the bar, walking the streets alone. And while I have been that Korean woman myself whenever I was visiting and partying it up, up out there, I feel like, again, people are looking at things from a very superficial lens. Sure, South Korea, they don't have guns. Sure, they don't have gun violence in South Korea. That's not a thing because guns are not legalized over there. Trigger warning here, I'm going to talk about SA. I don't even know where to begin to talk about this because I have a lot to say on this topic. But the South Korean justice system is a joke. And I believe that that also is another symptom of a very large issue, a societal issue in South Korea. For instance, this and heirs, their sentencing is hardly enough to justify the crimes that they committed against women, young girls, young boys. And oftentimes these abusers get off on probation. And then once they're released from their crimes, there's no other laws protecting them from hurting more victims. Their justice system is a joke. It's abysmal and it's pathetic. And I'm going to shout that from the rooftops until I die. Because I am an SA survivor myself, and I'm a huge advocate for victims and survivors alike. I just feel like SA gets brushed under the rug heavily in East Asian culture, and I think this is something that needs to be highlighted. Because a lot of these essay crimes happen within families. And because our culture is so, so contingent on saving face and not bringing shame to our family, many victims are expected to suffer through it alone. Another thing that I feel like Anna failed to mention is the fact that we have very defined gender roles in Korean society. 
that's still very ingrained in just East Asian culture in general, but it is very embedded in Korean society from my personal observation and experience. For instance, if you guys watch K-dramas, there's always some kind of line in there with the ma male lead or the female lead saying something like, oh, a man's supposed to be like this. And that just cringes me the fuck out. It's just like, way to continue to perpetuate these gender roles that you desire to escape from secretly. I'm sorry, guys, I'm getting heated and all over the place, and I'm sure I don't even fucking make sense, but I just have a lot to say on this topic. Let's not forget to mention the very creepy tropes that K-dramas and other popular forms of Korean media seem to perpetuate. Like, super huge age gaps between, like, an oppa character and then a yodongseng, where it's, like, a 12 or 13-year-old girl, and then it's, like, this 19 or 20-year-old college dude that's still, like, simping for his middle school neighborhood friend. Like, what the fuck is that about? That's mad creepy. You should not be hanging out with, like, a 13-year-old and grooming her. Speaking of grooming, this is a story that's currently a hot topic issue in Korea right now. It's about a professional dancer named Young Jae. He's from Street Woman Fighter. He had been grooming this young girl, a student of his, at his studio, and he impregnated her, which is why so many of his, uh, street crew members or whatever his dance studio members all quit on the spot. So why I wanted to bring the current Young Jae situation up is because not only is it relevant, but it also just goes to show you that due to the hierarchical nature of Korean society, abuse of power happens on so many levels in every facet of Korean society. And I can attest to that personally. I've obviously seen it play out in my family dynamics. I've seen it play out in work dynamics. I've seen it play out in my parents and how they communicate with their peers. It's just something that is so ingrained in the fabric of the makeup of Korean society that it's no wonder that such a radical feminist movement such as the 4B movement spurred up in the first place. It's an extreme reaction to what women are feeling how they're feeling oppressed by their male counterparts. This is already so fucking long and I could just continue to talk about this, but I have a lot more personal anecdotal uh, examples that I could share with you, so just let me know your thoughts. And I love you, Anna. I'm not trying to send you hate. I'm really not. I just think, um, I'm just here to open dialogue, discourse. Okay, so we're getting a little taste of what's going on. We're getting a little taste of how people are responding. Let's talk about why this movement is significant and specifically why it's significant for women, especially black women in the United States. Because as black women, you know, y'all know, y'all know we be starting these trends. Y'all know we start getting people on the bandwagon. And then, you know, after we jump on, then they jump on. Cause they like, oh, if the strong black women can do it, if those strong black women can do it, it, we can too. Okay, so let's talk about the significance of this for us as women and what this means, right? So I understand the fact that the Asian woman in the video is basically kind of like downplaying the significance of what the 4B movement is in South Korea. And I get that there's a certain dynamic there and there's a certain culture there. And I'm not saying that what she's saying is not true because everybody's gonna have their own opinions and I feel like everybody's entitled to their own opinion. No one should necessarily be forced to agree with another person because that's controlling. And I don't think we should be out to control other people or control how they feel or how they think about certain situations. But what I do feel is that no matter how or why the movement originated in South Korea in 2019, the effect that it's actually having on women in the United States is its own tornado. Like it's it, it's, its own individual storm. Because sometimes, right, just so you can grasp my meaning, I'm gonna try to create an analogy for you guys as best as I can, but it's kind of like a situation where, you know, maybe there was a kid on a playground, God forbid, who almost got kidnapped by a predator, right? And word spread through the grapevine and everybody played the game of telephone and they thought that this kid eventually at the end of the telephone line ended up getting kidnapped and had some type of harm done to them, right? Like just imagine that the kid was safe, everything was fine, but because of word of mouth and because of how things spread, there were some people far away who may have thought that the kid was harmed in some way, even if they weren't. So because those people far away felt like that kid was harmed and they didn't really know what happened, they all started to be more aware of where their children are and what their children are doing. And they started to implement more safety features at playgrounds and parks and have more security around to protect children and maybe police presence. That's not a bad thing. It's like the telephone game working to the benefit of people who need for it to work for them. So yes, while the child who who was originally the cause of the conversation wasn't necessarily harmed in the way that people grew to believe that they were. There were still benefits that came out of the miscommunication of what happened to that child. That's what the 4B movement moving to the United States is. And that's what I want women to understand. That's what I want people as a whole to understand. This is very significant for us because I feel that all over the world there's patriarchy and I feel that all over the world it's down played and it's diminished as if it's not that big of a deal. A lot of times by men and sometimes by the pick me women. And I think we need to get away from that because I feel that there's a dynamic between men and women and people in general, whoever you may be, whether you have a gender or not, whether you have a certain sexual preference or not, I feel like people need people. And that's been something that I've been very adamant about for a long time and something that it's taken me a long time to understand, but people need people. 
people. And in order to progress and evolve as a species, women need men and men need women. And there's no if, ands, or buts about it. Like the whole who's more important discussion is trash because it's irrelevant. We need each other equally. And that's why we each have different responsibilities as individuals and as a particular group. I don't know what to call it. As men, as women, as people, we have responsibilities within communities to do what needs to be done to help perpetuate the community forward and survive, okay? This is the thing though. Unfortunately, even though I strongly and firmly believe that there are a lot of good men out here, I see you guys on YouTube. I see you guys on TikTok. I see you guys trying to spread, you know, common sense, common decency, maturity, discipline, discernment, all these good words. You're, you know, trying to spread some type of positive information or encouragement and inspiration to people, motivation to people who need to hear it and not in a negative way. There are a lot more men who are trash, you know? And I don't think it's always been like that. I just think unfortunately the way that we've allowed ourselves to allow social media and celebrity culture to encroach upon our values, the more those dusty ass have come out of the woodwork, okay? And the more that they've been allowed space to be loud. So that in essence is why I feel like this movement is necessary because me personally, I'm just gonna be honest with you. And you can talk sh if you want in the comments. You can call me names if you want. I would ask that you not do that because you know I want to respect everybody who's watching. So I choose not to be as derogatory as some other people. And I choose to try to be educated with my commentary, but I've been through a lot of things. I've been in a lot of situations where even from parental figures, I have not been treated with the respect and the dignity that I deserve as a woman. And I've been treated in a very low and degraded way by men who I feel were supposed to protect me. There has not been one man in my life, not one, not one, who I feel actually has treated me the way I deserve to be treated. And part of that is my fault. Part of that that is because I didn't treat myself the way I should be treated and I didn't put up the boundaries that I should have put up. Part of that is because I didn't listen to elders or people who were wiser than me and I thought I knew better. But what it boils down to is that while that may be true and while I'm not avoiding the accountability of it, there's also other aspects that go into it. You can't just say that so many women are saying the same thing about being mistreated and act as if it's all because of the women. That's something that I just, I just cannot, I, I just... <sighs> I'm so tired of hearing that bullshit out of men's mouth as if they are not a contributing factor to this. And there's also the aspect of masculinity and femininity that you have to take into account. And I'm not talking about the whole online masculine feminine argument, X and Y chromosomes and all that bullshit. That's not what I'm talking about. I'm talking about spiritually on a deeper level when it comes to our DNA codes and encryptions, what masculine is and what feminine is. And that's what a lot Lot of people don't understand. What I said in the live that I was speaking about the women fighting at the Airbnb is that the reason these men are trying to pit us against each other and make us fight with each other, make us compete and be envious and jealous of each other is because they understand that we hold the key and the portal to life. And I'm, I'm not saying that both parties don't play a role, but what I'm saying is women have the tools to bring forth through their porthole life life, right? And I feel personally that women are the holy grail because it would make sense. Like even if people in these churches, men want to say that the holy grail is an item or it's in a box somewhere, there's probably a womb in that box. And I don't know, this is for entertainment purposes. This is my conspiracy theory. So it's probably not true, but I feel like there's a womb in that box. The womb is literally the holy grail, which is housed within the woman. Because when men lay with the woman, if she's anything worth something. She's going to make some type of relief come over. There's going to be some type of resolution and clarity that you have when you lay with a woman. And it's such a commodity. It's like, it doesn't matter. Child, I stepped outside today to go to Dollar General and did not have none of this going on. Looking crazy. No bra on. Titties hanging and swinging. And I was still getting approached. But men be out here acting like if you looking crazy, we not checking for you. If you doing this, we not. Like there are all these stipulations. But they be out here drooling over anything and everything. Thing. 
So because there's such a lack of self-control and because there's such perpetuation of projecting that's being put onto women from men as if we're to blame for everything and that everything is our fault from single motherhood to delinquent children to crime rates and prison rates and we're we're to blame for global warming and we're to blame for, you know, the ozone layer thinning out. Like everything is our fault, right? Okay, well, let us take this step back. That's what the 4B movement is. We're taking a step back because we don't want to distract you guys anymore. We don't want to hold you back anymore. We want you to be free to do what needs to be done. And in the process, if women are smart, they will then work on self-development so that we can come back as better women so that none of these problems will happen anymore when we re-enter into society. And I'm not saying that's exactly what it is. I'm not saying women are going to go hermit somewhere and go into a cave and not come out. But women are basically saying, you know what? You got it. Go off. Do it. Say it. Be it. Live your best life without us. And I'm not sure if men really grasp the gravity of that because even though a lot of men don't wanna give women credit for what we do, even if you provide all the tools and materials, you get what I'm saying? It's kinda like cloning someone. You can't make a real person without God. And I'm not a religious person, I've told that to y'all before, but you can't make a real person without God. So when people try to clone people and they try to create this Frankenstein type of human that's walking around with a body, They don't really have a soul. You need that extra spark to actually make it be life. And that's what I don't think men appreciate or understand. Men don't appreciate or understand how much your body literally changes because you are creating a life. You are literally baking a life in the oven of your body. And as a woman, that's not an easy thing. It literally takes you to a place that a lot of y'all men would never understand. And I'm not saying that y'all don't go through things that women don't understand because that's a, a real fact. Men go through things that women won't understand either. But that's why we have to have respect for each other. And that's the significance of this movement because men do not have the simple respect for women that they should have. And I don't think women are asking for a lot. Why do women today expect so much more from men than women did generations ago? That's a good question. I assumed it was because women are more and they know it would be better to stay single than have a partner with no capacity or desire to meet the basic needs that any relationship requires to survive. What? Hmm? I thought we were talking about expectations. Right. Feels like we're gonna need the clipboard for this one. Where are you hiding clipboards? Okay, hit me with some unreasonable expectations. Okay. Well, you know as well as I do, they're expecting so much more emotional garbage from us now. Okay. Women want the bare minimum levels of intimacy and connection. What? Uh, they're always complaining about the mutual chores and the domestic labor. Listen, I don't care if the dishes get done. Okay. Equality and shared responsibility. Anything else? Men were just more free back in the day. If they wanted to go to the bar, they went to the bar. It didn't have to be a big deal. Okay. Women don't want to be neglected or overlooked anymore. So needy. We can't even like and follow half naked pictures of models online without getting an earful about it. Women want a partner with integrity that they can actually trust. And don't even get started if god forbid we have a fight together no. she wants us to take turns speaking trying to understand validate and empathize with each other's experience i'm sorry what oh my gosh women want mutual respect what has this world come to she wants me to set aside time in the day to talk to her about my day and my feelings and stuff basic communication skills she wants me to hug her instead of just groping her i'm sorry beggars can't be choosers i believe they call that one affection i just don't get it i don't understand how you can't see how unfair it is for men out here yeah i'm seeing something all right i think we're the problem Now there are some women out there who are asking for a lot and not willing to give anything. And those are the whores that you guys need to understand and learn how to discern the difference between as men. That's your responsibility. It's not our responsibility to have to pay for the fact that all the whores are what you are attracted to and what you choose because of what the media puts in your face that you then fall for. Just like it's not your responsibility as a man to account for all of the men or boys or dust balls that we as women come across, we are the ones responsible for discerning the difference between the two. And I think, you know, from the response that I'm seeing online, a lot of women are really embracing this 4B movement because we're just tired. And I think, you know, a lot of men out here wanna be babied. And since you wanna be babied, and since you're looking for a mom, and since a lot of you do have mother or father issues and childhood trauma that you haven't dealt with, just look at this as the collective of women coming together to put you in time out. That's what this is since y'all want a mother, since y'all want somebody to take care of you, y'all want to live in your soft era, your your male soft era. It's, what is it not, what is it? It's not sprinkle, sprinkle, it's drizzle, drizzle. Oh, you want to drizzle, drizzle and live in your soft era and you want to have women pay for everything for you and propose to you and all these things. Well, then we're going to put you on punishment too. And we're going to put you in the corner and you're going to have to deal with it. And if you don't want to deal with it, then you'll realize eventually that there is no way other than 
willing to deal with it. Like, even if you don't want to deal with it, you're going to have to deal with it. And it's not like me trying to be arrogant or condescending. It's just like me stating a fact. And I'm just going to be clear. I don't think every woman is going to be able to do this 4B movement because it's going to take a lot of self-discipline. That's what brings me to my next point. This is what women need to know. Some of the things I feel like women need to know when it comes to this 4B movement, it's going to be harder than your thinks. It's going to be really hard, especially for those women who really need the companionship of a man and need a body laying next to them at night. And they cannot go a few weeks or months or a long period of time without male camaraderie and male companionship on a romantic sexual level. That's what women need to know. Number one, it's going to be extremely difficult because you're going to have to literally train your mind. It's going to be like quitting smoking. It's going to be like quitting smoking weed. It's going to be like quitting smoking cigarettes. It's going to be like quitting drinking. Any type of addiction that you have where you have to literally wean yourself off of it and reprogram your mind, that's what this is going to be. And it's going to be hell on wheels. I want women to know that this is not going to be a walk in the park. It's not just like, oh, we're going to take a few weeks off. No, this may be some years. This may be a long period of time that is undisclosed and undetermined. And you need to be prepared for it because if you're really going to sit here and like say that you want something different from men, this is honestly what it's going to take. It's going to take for women to literally raise their standards. It's going to take for women to put the bar from here where it is on the floor to up here for there to be any real change or any real movement from these men. What I think that you should focus on while you attempt this task of reprogramming your mind and weaning yourself off of the need to be with a man is to start looking in the mirror. Really look at yourself, start doing self-development and look at yourself in the mirror. There was one time, I, I think like a year ago when I was posting on this channel because I've struggled to kind of like get regular on this channel but I'm really devoted to keeping promises that I've made to myself and that's the particular moment that I'm in with my healing journey in my life because that's really what this is this is about healing this is because we all need to be focusing on attacking the demons that we fight every single day inside of ourselves that nobody else sees us fight and that's why all of this is happening but it took me a while to get this channel off the ground and one thing that I told myself in this new season that I'm coming into in my life is that I'm keeping the promises to myself that I've made no matter what comes my way, no matter what tries to get me off course, no matter what tries to distract me or get me off task, I'm gonna do what I promised myself that I was going to do. And it's because I wanted to come on here really like as far as my mission and what motivates me is to try to touch women basically to help them see and to understand that they can choose the life that they want. They don't have to settle for the life that they've been dealt. And it's not just women. I feel like I can do that for men as well because I'm a very progressive person. Like I don't care who gets value out of my content as long as you get some type of value from it. And I wanna be a person of ethics and morals and honesty and integrity. That's something that I feel would be beneficial for women to focus on during this time. You're gonna have to make some promises to yourself. You're gonna have to set some goals and you're gonna have to work towards something to keep you preoccupied so that you're not focusing on men 20 24 seven, seven days a week, 365. Now it's possible. I'm not going to say it's impossible. And there's a few caveats to this that I, that I want you guys to stick around and I'm going to talk about because not every woman is going to be able to do this. Not every woman is going to be able to dedicate themselves to this. It is literally going to be the cream of the crop when it comes to women who are going to be able to keep this up and keep this going. But if you've already been working on yourself and you've already been developing self and you've already been tackling your childhood trauma and you've already been going into the cellar and digging out your dirt and putting everything on front street, then this will be a really easy thing for you to do. You just have to start taking steps to look in the mirror and see who you really are and begin to uncover those things that you need to unpack so that you can throw them out. Okay. Cause the it's time to take out the trash. That's it. Point blank period. And what women need to understand is this is not going to be something quick and it's not going to be something easy and it's going to take a lot of discipline. And I don't think every woman is going to be able to do it. Now I will let y'all know at the end what I'm talking about. So don't let me forget. So it certainly seems at this point that South Korea has successfully exported uh, the 4B movement uh, to the United States, and and I think it's I think that's fantastic. Uh, South Korea, from what I understand, is a particularly misogynistic society, and so women there over the last four or five years have just said, relative to men, we're not going to date you, we're not going to marry you, we're not going to have sex with you, we're not going to have kids with you, we're checking out. In Korean language, all four of those activities start with the letter B, hence the 4B movement, and now that is making its way to the United States. I've been seeing quite a bit 
uh, of four B related content that, that women are posting uh, on TikTok. A lot of a lot of my friends who are women are posting a lot of that stuff. I think it's fantastic. I think it's awesome because basically it's just like until you guys get your shit together and and become you know actually self actualized human beings, just decent human beings, and start treating women like decent human beings, we're checking out. We're not gonna we're not gonna have anything to do with you. And of course, the United States, being the United States with its bro culture and incels and men's rights activists and all this stuff. The, the, the guys who are freaking out, there are a lot of guys posting TikToks where they're freaking out. They're extremely angry about the 4B movement coming to the United States because on some level they know that they are the reason why that's happening. <laughs> they're dumb, but they're not stupid. They know. They just feel entitled to women. Uh, and it's like, yeah, I hear that women want men to change and make all of these adjustments. I shouldn't have to do that in order to have access to women, is their perspective. And so now they've created some 4G movement, which I don't, I don't even know what that stands for. I'm, I'm not sure. But it's all these angry, you know, alpha male, high value men, incel types who know that they are the problem. They know that they're the problem. They just don't care. They like, yeah, I'm the problem. And I, I shouldn't have to change anything because they feel that men are superior to women. And they will never in a million years ever, ever, ever view women as their equal. And which is projection. That's projection that's fighting. It's because like a lot of these women who are, who are speaking out in favor of the 4B movement, these men know that they will never be equal to those women. They're far inferior to those women um, because they are dumb. Uh, and, and they're just, the temper tantrums these guys are throwing is specifically because they understand on some level that they are the problem. <laughs> and they're angry about that, but they're just projecting it outwards. It's funny, it's fun to watch. It's fun to watch, but they're cracking up hard. What I feel like men need to know, because there's a lot of angry men. It seems like there's a lot of men who are upset, but I, I commend those men who are not being pussies about it because they understand and they see how much debauchery has taken over our society and how much it has literally ruined the fabric of family, how it's ruined the fabric of childhood, how it's ruined the fabric of community. And I really commend those men for putting in their input in the situation. But what men need to understand is that all all you have to do is do better. That's why I told women to do what they need to do because if they want to come out on the other side of this after men have made these improvements based on our actions, then women have to be ready for the men that are going to come out on the other side of this. What's going to end up happening if men are smart and if they want to really have what it is that they want in a good woman, in in a in a team with a woman and they are in that type of mindset, men will understand that this is not a bad thing. That while women are taking this time to improve themselves, the ones that really are worth you focusing on are taking the time to improve themselves. What y'all need to be doing is taking the time to improve yourself as well. Because once these women come out on the other side of this, if they take it seriously and they have the discipline to be able to do this for however long it needs to be done to make a change, these are not going to be the type of women that you want to fuck with. I'm, I'm telling you straight up, these are not going to be the type of women that you want to fuck with. And there have been a lot of men who have played me and I allow a lot of men to play me so they may look at this or see this at some point in the future hopefully not but they might and say oh well she's talking all that shit but when I was with her she let me do this and she let me do that okay well I'm a different bitch now than I was an hour ago so don't ever get me fucked up you get what I'm saying there's certain underlying principles that will never change about me because I'm gonna be straight up I'm from Chicago I will talk to you crazy and I will definitely say a few cuss words but I'll never be a lie I will I'm never gonna lie to you because what's the point? Because if I lie to you, then I'm lying to myself. So at the end of the day, as a man, if you really want to value this time and you really want to see what this is, try to look at it from our perspective because it's literally a situation where I just feel like women are tired. Like me personally, as a woman, I was the woman who gave the broke nigga a chance. I was the woman who gave the nigga with a baby mama a chance. I was the woman who gave the dude with a criminal history a chance. I was the woman who gave people chance after chance after chance to just walk all over me like I was a doormat. I was the woman who was cooking and cleaning. I was the woman who was going 50-50. I was the woman who was taking care of the kids. I was the woman who was willing to sacrifice and help build my man up, build a bare man, build a man. That's the type of woman I was. And what has it gotten me? It's gotten me into mountains of debt. It's gotten me into trouble with law enforcement, not just me, but like always being involved somehow with law enforcement. It's gotten my ass whooped. It's gotten my jaw knocked in. It's, it's gotten my face swollen on the way to work, okay? It's gotten my teeth knocked out. It's gotten me into a situation where now I have to work 10 times harder to get myself out of it. And unfortunately, that's the reality of a lot of women. And unfortunately, really, it's the reality of a lot of black women. And it's just like, why would we keep wanting to sign up for that? And y'all don't even want to respect us. Why would we keep signing up for that? Yeah, it might look like something that a lot of women are willing to accept, but a lot of women don't want to accept it. And it's like the women who are really worth something, who really would be willing to 
build with a man are just constantly getting used and abused. And it's not just from the dusties. It's from those of y'all who think you're a good guy when really you're not a good guy. When you play mind games, when you manipulate, when you breadcrumb, when you gaslight, when you act egotistical and condescending to women because you think you're on a higher pedestal or on a higher level just because you're a man. Or when you don't know how to deal with your emotions to express yourself or communicate properly to let a woman know where you are in your mental space. It, it's those of you who prioritize work over quality time. And yes, while work is important, you totally disregard the companionship that's needed to build a healthy bond with a woman. It's like all that type of shit that comes with doing self-development, all that type of stuff that comes with healing and digging deep to figure out where your traumas are, all that stuff that comes with those things. That's what men need to be focusing on. I don't know how many times we have to tell y'all this same exact thing. Men do not provide women with protection. Y'all are the reason we need it. If there were no men on this planet, women would feel free to wear whatever they wanted, go wherever they wanted at any time of day, and they wouldn't worry. This is a story that y'all have told y'all selves to feel better about your own behavior. Come up with a new lie to tell yourself. This one is getting fucking boring. Honestly, what I will say is that with any movement, this is just my opinion, with any movement, people are gonna take it to the extreme, guys. People are gonna always take it to the extreme. And it's always gonna be something where you have to just be very careful about what you choose to participate in, what you choose to believe. There's a video coming out about 10 things that the older generation kind of taught me. But one of those things is believe only half of what you see and none of what you hear. Cause you're, you're gonna have to be very strong, whether you're a man who wants improvement and wants to see women treated equally or whether you're a woman who wants to have a better experience in your relationships with men it's like we're gonna just have to be very careful because there's a lot of manipulation and there's a lot of things going on in the media that try to elicit certain emotions from us that we just need to be aware of like who we are and where we are and what is ours and what's not so I say all that to say just focus on yourself that's what the most important thing is right now it's like it's fine to look into all these other celebrities and things that are going on but really try to focus on self and what you can do to improve yourself at least one step at a time each and every day now what I was gonna say before that I told you guys to wait a little bit towards the end for is that I don't feel like it's gonna be necessary for every single woman to be able to do this because I'm gonna be honest with you I don't think every single woman is gonna be able to do this I feel like there's only gonna need to be a certain amount of women who are gonna do this because the ones who are gonna be left are the ones who are used up and ran through the reason why it's not going to take every woman to accomplish the goal that we're looking for is because it's kind of like back in the day when women who were basically used up and ran through and not really seen as 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 valuable worked in the brothels and then you had the other women who were kind of a little bit more classy but still didn't have a lot of self-esteem and they weren't in the brothel but they were in like the fancy boarding house with the with the lady you know running it and all that type of stuff and then you had the really high class women who were you know at the ball and wore the gowns and things like that. See, this is the thing. It's always gonna be ratchet, bitch. It's always gonna be a ratchet bitch out there ready to accept whatever crumbs and scraps that a man is willing to give. But see, the thing is, is that men who actually value their life and value their peace and want to propel their life forward and have a partner that they can build with, they ain't gonna wanna deal with those type of women. And the type of women that they really want are gonna be the ones who are gonna be able to continue to abstain through this 4B movement. That's why I feel like it's not gonna take every single woman to do this. If men think that it's okay, to kind of like berate women for their choice to do this and they wanna try to make fun of us for this or they wanna try to put us down for this like you may have seen in some of the videos earlier, they're the ones who are gonna end up stuck with those ran through women. And the men who are actually of a caliber that deserve to propel and move forward with a woman of the same caliber, they're gonna be matched together and it's not gonna be so obtuse anymore when it comes to the type of people that are coming together in these situations. Because there's only a certain extent that you can go when you say you attract what you attract because you are what you attract like attracts like there's only a certain extent that you can go to that because there's a lot of people who are out here manipulating and it's just way too much and it's not going to take every woman to do this so be aware man if you try to put women down or if you try to make us feel bad or if you try to physically harm us or attack us which is also something that I feel like could happen in this situation just know that eventually the tables are going to turn the tables always turn eventually the tables always turn what women need to be aware 
aware of is your self-defense. Like the man said earlier, what women need to be aware of is the way that men will use tactics to switch up. Okay. Because I feel like one of the most important things that women need to know is that there's going to be a lot of perpetrators. There's going to be a lot of men who act as if they're doing these things and working on themselves and they're not going to be doing that. And that's why your main focus needs to be on you so that you don't allow men to come in and place that distraction on you and trick you into thinking they've done the work when they haven't done the work. Listen, some of y'all ladies don't have to settle. I'm sorry to be the bearer of bad news, but listen, everybody can't have a perfect man out here. It ain't even enough of us around. Like, let's be honest. So at the end of the day, we can go ahead and put that 50-50 conversation to rest because every woman ain't going to get 80, 20, 100, 0. Whatever y'all thinking is going to be 60, 40. Some of y'all going to have to go 50-50 and shit. Y'all might got to go 60, 40 on your end with the man. Just to be happy at the end of the day. Like, let's be realistic. Come on now. Somebody gonna have to settle, man. That's all I'm saying. All the straight men that's left in the world, a lot of them is in jail. A lot of them married. What do that leave left? Everybody can't. Everybody can't have their cake and eat it too. Like, you can't have the best of the best. Sometimes you gotta just go for what you got and be happy and be grateful. Because you can have nothing at the end of the day and be miserable. Come on now. J. Cole said, love yours. I gotta take this in consideration. To be told, it's actually the black man's fault that the black woman is masculine. And I know I like to get on women's ass and hold them accountable a lot on my page, but this one is really for the men right here. See, nowadays I'm seeing a lot of black men go overseas and get non-American women just to disrespect the women of African descent. And to be honest, that's working backwards. See, why run from the problem if you had a hand in it? We as a community, as black men, we had a hand in black women being masculine, so why not be accountable for that? Instead, I see a lot of men being cowards, playing the blame game and putting it right back on the black woman. That's exactly what the man wants you to do. Think about it. They try to destroy us and put us against each other. They've been trying that for the longest, and now they're trying it in different ways. You got black women saying they don't need a man for nothing. And then we got black men trying to go overseas and marry women that are not of the African descent. And the truth be told, black women still marry black men at a higher rate than black men choose black women to marry. And that's sad when we actually cause a lot of this masculinity. If we didn't get taken out the homes, number one, when it came to prison, we would have been in the homes from the 70s to be able to actually instill that discipline that would have kept a lot of our black boys off the street. But instead, the women had to hold the household down and do everything. Pay the bills, teach the child, raise the child, instill discipline. And we've seen that didn't get us nowhere because, once again, where were the black men at? None of this has to do with the black women. That's the sad part about it. It's more about the system and the decisions that that black man chooses to make. If you decide to leave that home, that's on you. And if not, you was taken off the streets based off of jail or drugs. Again, that's a decision that you chose to make. You knew what the laws was, and they were set up to make you fail, so you could not be in a home, so you should have did your best due diligence to prevent that from happening. Black women having to do everything and raise our kids by themselves and hold down the household by themselves is a big reason why they mask them. They don't trust it. They don't trust black men. They don't trust the history, and I don't blame them. So what we have to do as black men and the whole is be accountable and figure out how to be patient with our women. Figure out how to build our women back up morally and trust in us and believe in us and actually stay on the stay stay on the streets again. Stay out of jail and build businesses, build wealth in our community and teach our kids and keep our kids out of jail. Discipline them correctly. You can't do that if you're not in the home. A lot of this has to do with black men. A lot of the people that's, you know, going around killing and doing all this robbing, those are black those are black men. Those are black boys at one point. And they needed a father, they needed discipline. When they didn't get that, they ended up looking for it at the wrong place. And we all know how this goes. So again, we need a place of accountability. We need that black man. Because I guarantee you, you will see through a man who has not done the work if you're really doing what you need to do to evolve yourself to another level. Because it'll be different things that come up, different signs that you receive. Your physical body may react a certain way. That's going to tell you that that man is not on the level that he claims to be. But that's what we as women need to watch out for because there's going to be men who get physically violent with us. There's going to be men who try to attack us. There's going to be men who try to trick us and lie to us. There's going to be men who want to retaliate and get revenge. There's going to be men out here who have been constantly putting women down on social media. They're going to delete their TikToks. They're going to delete their t Twitters or X posts or whatever. They're going to delete their Instagram posts degrading women just so it can seem to us that they're one of the ones who are on our side. So we need to understand what the ops going to look like. We need to understand who they're going to be. And I'm not, I'm not even going to sit here and hold you. I know that you eventually will be able to see this, but it's going to be crucial for you to do self-development on yourself in order to do so. I'm going to be honest. I love it. The Come on, 4B. Listen, I don't care if these men are mad talking about we copied off somebody. That man was in that video talking about we need to we need to work on white supremacy. No, sir, you need to work on fucking white supremacy. Mm -mm, get somebody else to do it. Or, or, or whatever you was talking about women need to do. No, you need to do that. Ooh. But see, they know they the problem, y'all. They know they are the problem and they don't want to admit it and they want women to find a solution and we've officially clocked out so i hope you guys have enjoyed this video be sure to like the video subscribe you guys get in the comments let me know what you think of my commentary i really appreciate all of your support check out any of the other videos on the channel i cannot wait to see what you guys have to say about this one and i will see you guys next time bye